When somebody mentions AI editing tools, whether it's in Lightroom Classic or in Photoshop or some other application, the first thing that probably comes to mind is all the generative AI tools. Things like generative fill, the remove tool, generative expand, but those are generative AI tools and there are a lot of other very powerful and very fast tools that are built off of AI that are in these applications. And I wanna show a few of those here in this episode because they can save you a lot of time, have far less impact on your processing power to speed up your editing. And they do work in many, many cases. So I wanna show those. I also wanna show near the end of this video an AI tool that's also being implemented. It's starting to be rolled out into various applications of Adobe and it is extremely powerful. So let's get started with the simple stuff first and work our way up from there. So the first hidden AI tool we're going to use will move this pendant lamp over to where it's properly centered in the room. You can see that it's too far over to the left. Now, if this were for a property listing for your multiple listing service, you got to leave it as is, but this is a common request that I get from my architectural clients. When they see stuff like this that's just not centered, it's off. Yeah, it was a mistake on the construction crew, but they're going to be using this for an advertisement, so they want this moved and to look the way that it's supposed to look. So anyways, to do this, let's zoom in here a little bit. And what we want to do is have a single layer that we can edit on. Now, if you had done your flambient blending or your HDR blending, then you would stamp a layer at the top where you can then do this in Photoshop. Here, I'm working off of the JPEG that was delivered to the client. So what I'm going to do is take this and duplicate that layer by just doing Control J. Now I've got this layer that I can work with. Okay, now the tool we want to use is Content Aware Move, and that will be under this section here. So where your Remove tool, like that's selected right now, you would click and hold, and then you'll get the menu of the various options, and the one we want is Content Aware Move. So select Content Aware Move. Make sure that you have Move selected. They have an Extend here. It's not what we want. We want Move. And you can adjust the structure anywhere from about zero to seven. It's at four right now. Let's just bump that up just a little bit. We'll take that almost all the way up to the top. That gives us a fair amount of strictness. And as far as the color, that's also on a, that's like a scale of one to 10. Five is good. We'll just bump that up just a little bit. You can play with this as much as you need to to see how well it works for your situation. Then what you do is you click and drag around this object. So I'm going to click and drag around here to make sure I get everything, including some of its shadows. And then when I come up here and I release, it'll close that. Now I want to just click and drag it, but I want to lock where it is. So what I'm going to do is click and hold shift and then drag. So click, shift, and then drag. I'm going to move it to where I think it should be, which should be right about center there. Release, and then click the checkbox up here, and it'll apply then that content aware move. Now I'll do control D to deselect or command D on a Mac. And you can see that it kind of screwed up a couple things over here. Not bad though, we can turn this on and off and we can see that we've got that moved. Now we need to edit this in. Now there's a couple ways to do that and we can try our next tool to do that. The next tool is also going to use something content aware and anytime you see that, that's using the old AI engine known as Sensei that Adobe had in a lot of its products. A sensei was used for this content aware move. Now it's not going to be the same as generative fill, but as you saw, it was very quick. So to use this next one, what we want to do is first create just a blank layer. So we have something to work off of that we don't have to keep disturbing this layer. So to do that, let's just go up to the layer menu and just go to new layer and you could name it whatever you'd like and we'll just click OK. Then the next thing you want to do is go back over here where we selected Content Aware Move and now select the Spot Healing Brush and make sure that Content Aware is selected as the type. With the Spot Healing Brush, I can do a variety of things. For instance, some of these shadows that were here, I'm just going to click and just paint around here. As soon as I release, that's applied. So I could keep going around here very quickly and cleaning up these various shadows. You can see that's the difference. If I turn this layer off, you can see this is what it was. So I could keep doing that as much as I felt that I needed to, and it'll just keep cleaning it up. Oop, got a little bit too much there. And it'll uh, just, every time I release, 
clean that up. Now, as you saw, it's not the most accurate, but this saves you a lot of time. Then worst case scenario, you could always use then the generative tools like the remove tool. But let's try it here, for instance. We've got this warpy stuff that happened with the crown molding. So let's just go in here and let's just paint just a little bit of that and see if it helps. Didn't really help. You can try it a couple more times. You think it would. Didn't really do it. So in this case, this is where we might have to remove tool. So let's go over here and we'll select then the remove tool. And this should do a much better job at healing this area. So once again, I'll go around here, but now I have to then press the checkbox. And once I do, does its generative, you can see that's now fixed. There's another example though, using that spot healing brush with content aware that really shines and really outdoes using the remove tool. In, in this case, it's going to be cleaning up this driveway lickety split. So we're gonna revisit this image, by the way, when we get to the fourth tool, that is really gonna make a big difference. You're not gonna believe what this looked like before. This is the finished product before cleaning it up. So what we wanna do is once again, we'll just make a blank layer, layer, new layer. So we've got something we can work on and not damage the one below. Then I'm gonna zoom in really close here so we can see this driveway a little bit. And by the way, this was part of the historic district in Santa Paula. So not necessarily the best shape, but really nice Airbnb. You should see the inside of it. Anyways, we will take them once again, our spot healing brush. Make sure it is in content aware mode. And then we just real quickly, you just brush. You just click brush release, click brush release. You keep doing this and it is lickety split. This takes no CPU processing time hardly at all. So this actually was a huge improvement many years ago with Photoshop where everybody was asking, can't you speed up the spot healing brush? Well, look how fast it is. I can clean up an entire yard after a windstorm in probably less than one minute. And it is far less intense on my machine than trying to use the generative remove. We'll zoom out here. And just with that little bit of cleanup, you can see this is before and this is after. And now let's move on to the next tool. So let's say that we wanted to widen this a little bit. We needed to have more of this cabinet showing. To do that, let's say that we want to crop it. Now I'm not going to crop it and use some type of generative expand or generative fill. I'm going to just select here to just use a ratio. I'll clear all this. And now I'm just going to just enlarge it just a little bit and go over here. And then I'll click the checkbox. So now I'm cropped and I could use generative AI fill to do its best job and it probably would, but it would also cost me a generative credit to fill this area in. So instead, go up here and where you would select the quick object selection tool, Select the magic wand. That's a really old tool. Select in here that area. Once you click, you can see it selects that. And to help it, you can expand a little bit. So you could go up to the select menu, then go to modify, and then you can expand that. And let's expand that, let's say by 20 pixels. So now you can see it's expanded into this area all the more. And what we wanna do now is content aware fill. That's under edit. And then we go to content aware fill. Now in this case, we're going to press the auto button. When I press auto, you can see it did a really good job of selecting the area that should be filled in. I'll just press okay, knowing it's gonna to go to a new layer as output. Once it does, you can see we've got this new layer, control D to deselect. So it added this in as a really good fill. Now, the next AI tool is something that's being rolled out slowly into various Adobe products, and it is extremely powerful. But before getting to that, I just wanted to take a moment and mention that if you'd like to learn more about real estate photography, I'd invite you to take a look at my courses on real estate photography. I've got courses to do professional interior photography, expert editing, exterior photography, videography for real estate, and business and marketing for real estate as well. I have links to all that, and along with my books as well down in the description for this video. But without further ado, let's get on to this new AI tool. This tool is going to be available in a lot of other applications. Right now, it's available in Adobe Camera Raw and they're slowly rolling this out in Lightroom Classic, 
We're sure to see it throughout the year in 2025. What I'm gonna do is in Bridge, I'm gonna open this particular image here into Adobe Camera Raw. There's a lot of ways to do that. You can right click on here and you can say open in Camera Raw. So I'll just do that. And we can see that this is a very overexposed image. Now, normally this would have been blended like I show in my exteriors course so that you would have other brackets of uh, images that would take care of all these various highlights but you don't have to necessarily if this is all that you have. So what you would do is you would go up to profile up here and instead of Adobe Color or whatever selected, you would select Adobe Adaptive Beta. Now eventually that beta is gonna go away, but when you do, AI is going to analyze the image as it does its debayering process. So as it decodes the raw file, not any other adjustments. Watch this, I'm gonna go ahead and select that and now it's gonna do some AI adjustments and Boom, this is what it came up with and notice that none of the sliders moved, nothing. So it transformed that. So far, let's take a look at what happened. I'm gonna hit the backslash key for the before and then hit it again and that's our after. So it did a really good job just in decoding the raw file to this state. Now I could take it further by saying, you know what, let's up those shadows a little bit. Let's up the whites a little bit. We'll take down the highlights a bit, maybe add a little more contrast with the whites and whatnot while we take the highlights down and also add in some things like a little bit of vibrance. So now we've got a really good looking picture. Once again, let's do the before and now the after. We go in here though, we can see that there's not a lot of noise, basically none in this instance but let's take something even more dramatic. Let's take a look at these three images and let's open all these into Camera Raw. Now this would be for a typical bracket like I show in the exteriors course where we've got this one here, which a lot of times would expose for the house, but this was for a winter day and it was very, very shadow. You can see here, this is the other uh, exposure in the bracket that gets the sky and then this is one worst case scenario now we can use for the house. But in this case, let's say that we just had this image here and that was the only one that we had. Okay, now what we can do is do the same thing by applying that Adobe Adaptive Profile. When we do that, we get some really good looking sky, we get a little better exposure, but the house is still a little dark. That's why there's two more AI tools that I wanna show you in here that you can add on top of here and get really, really good results. The first one is to bring the exposure up of the house. To do that, what we wanna do is go over to our masking tool and we wanna select subject. Now AI now is figuring out what the subject should be and what it's gonna find in most cases doing real estate is that the house is the subject. Not always, and if not, then you could do it by just grabbing objects. You don't have to do it by selecting automatically the subject. Well, now that we have that, now we can increase the exposure of that area. So I'll just increase the exposure. Now it's increasing also the, the roof. So all we have to do is just subtract from that and we're gonna subtract using a brush. And I've got the brush set to a flow of uh, about 71 over here, a little bit of feathering. And then I'm just gonna brush over this area and get rid of that overexposure here on the roof. Okay, so now we've got something now that AI in two ways has really improved our image, but there's another AI tool that we should use here because when we go in 100%, besides seeing some uh, lens flare here that could probably be fixed with either spot healing or the remove tool, we've got a lot of noise. So we need to fix that. And to do that, go down here to your detail section. And in detail, there is this denoise checkbox. You click that and AI now is gonna determine where the noise is and it's going to clean it up. Now, this can take a while. This is why it's always better and faster in these cases if you can do your own exposure blending and then you don't have to worry so much about noise. But in this case, this extreme case of a lot of noise, this will help. So after a few minutes and a lot of processor power over on my end, the denoise is done. Now this can take a long time depending on the GPU that you have installed. And so it is recommended to definitely do your exposure blending first. You don't have to worry too much about the denoise feature here. That does take some AI intensity. Let's take for instance, even this, the highly exposed image that we had here. And we apply the adaptive profile to it 
then we're going to get something that's kind of in the middle, somewhat in between. But from here, we have a better chance of raising our shadows, doing stuff with the sky. But in either case, like doing it here with a variety of AI tools, we only needed one image. This is what it looked like before. And this is what it looked like after. And that was using a combination of a few different AI tools.